suppose this is the unit circle, and we've chosen an angle alpha corresponding to this point, and so this radius is 1, and we know that this length is sine of alpha, and this length is cosine of alpha. Since this is a right-angled triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem and get that 1 squared equals sine of alpha squared plus cosine of alpha squared, which I wrote here. I can rewrite this expression like that, where sine squared of alpha means the same thing as sine of alpha squared. This identity is called the fundamental trigonometric identity, and it's true for all angles alpha. This is the optional problem. We have a triangle. This is its circumcircle. This is a line tangent to the circumcircle at this point, and this here is an altitude from this point to this line. This is the orthocenter of the triangle, and this is the circumcircle of this triangle. This is the center of this circle, and this is the diameter from this point to its diametrically opposite point here. So the center is the midpoint of this diameter. We drop a perpendicular from this point to this diameter here, and we need to prove that this spool length equals this spool length here. And here's the solution. I'm marking the angles of the triangle, again alpha, beta, and gamma. Then from the alternate segments theorem, we have that this angle equals this angle equals gamma because they both correspond to this arc. From the law of sines, we know that the length of this side of the triangle is 2r sine gamma. And now from this right angle triangle with this angle gamma, we find that this side is this side times sine of gamma, so 2r sine squared of gamma. And now we need to prove that the length of this blue segment is also 2r sine squared of gamma. Now take a look at this triangle. This angle is gamma, therefore this angle is 90 minus gamma. Now take a look at this triangle. This is its circumcircle, and this here is its circumcenter. And this angle is 90 minus gamma, which corresponds to this arc. And therefore, this angle, with respect to the center of the circle, is twice as much, so this is 2 times 90 minus gamma, or 180 minus 2 gamma. We know that this equals this equals the radius of the circle, so this is an isosceles triangle, and because this is 180 minus 2 gamma, then this angle must be gamma, and this angle here must be gamma. We know that this length, it is the distance between the orthocenter and this vertex of the triangle, and so it equals 2r cosine of gamma. Now in this triangle, we have that this is a hypotenuse, 2r cosine of gamma, and this angle is gamma. Therefore, this side equals 2r cosine of gamma times cosine of gamma, or 2r cosine squared of gamma. It turns out that this circle and this circle have equal radii, and if you don't believe me, look at the optional problem of element 56. There you can see proof that this circle has the same radius as this circle. Here we have a diameter of this circle. Therefore, the length of this whole segment is 2 times r. And this length is 2 times r cosine squared of gamma. And so the length we're looking for would be 2r minus 2r cosine squared of gamma. Hence, this is what we need to prove, that 2r minus 2r cosine squared of gamma, which is this segment, equals 2r sine squared of gamma. Now we can cancel out the 2r's. Now we take this cosine squared of gamma, put it on the other side of the equality, and then we get this, which is exactly the fundamental trigonometric identity. And so we're done.